Video games or superheroes? This is the question for which genre is going to take over the nerd hierarchy for movies and films. And that is what we're going to answer today with Brandon Klein and your host, Jake Sherbing. Hello, Brandon. Hello. You excited for this? Oh, I'm hyped. You got an answer? Uh, Save it. Okay. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We'll answer that question. Is it video games moving forward or superheroes? If you've been following along, you probably already know my answer. All right. Let's get into it. Let's see if Brandon knows the words. Cue the music. You got it. Hello, welcome to Don't Involve Me, the place like Ash, Kessner, Pikachu, we don't evolve, we just level up. Brandon, hello. Hello again. Yes. Are you ready? I'm, I'm ready. All right, let's get into it right away. What are you nerding out on, Mr. Brandon? Uh, the last few days, actually, painting for Warhammer. Yeah. That's what I've been doing. Uh, we have that podcast coming up real quickly. We yep. got a double header today. Yep, yep. Good timing. So, yeah. Painting for Warhammer. I know Tom's been working hard. We've kind of already seen that during the Legend of Stonar when we did that recording. Mm-hmm. So it was looking good. Oh, absolutely. We got a little bit more left, right? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know how much more Tom has done, but we'll see. Uh, he has not updated me, so yeah. we're going to have to help him out Definitely. real quickly. We got less than a month left on that. Yeah. What else? Uh, that's pretty much it. I mean, uh, some One Piece and some other random animes that have been coming out. That's about it for the nerding. Nice. Yeah. One piece um dress rosa. Yes. Six uh ninety five, ninety seven around there. I just know we're getting around the seven hundred mark. Um arguably my favorite arc in the whole Fighting show. with Do Flamingo and the infamous birdcage, and I'm gonna leave it at that for yeah. those who haven't um watched it. But no, it's getting exciting. It's getting hard to like not watch it, mm-hmm. not do it. So like usually Especially the weeks that we don't have Scott, we will watch it because it's uh, more, it's not as kid appropriate. Mm. Honestly, the kids that I go to like work with at school, they all watch One Piece and they're barely older than he is. Right. And they're like, oh, I'm watching that show too. I'm like, I feel like you shouldn't be, but yeah, yeah, it's a, it can be a little. Edgy. You got, you got, yeah. The, the words I hear there is worse than the show yeah. itself. So yeah, absolutely, be real. Um, but no, it's getting really good for me. So mm-hmm. and then you just made it to Wano. Yep, yep, they yeah. just arrived. I think that's the mark where, like, Ro was like, meet, meet me at Wano, yep, and we'll talk. Said. Yep, yep. And I'm like, I got 200 episodes left. I made it. Um, I've been really into Fallout 4 lately. Oh, you went back and started playing again? I did. I'm doing a melee build. Okay. I've never, I'm usually, like, the range distance Vats shooter. constantly. Yeah. <laughs> the, you know, the rookie safe mode. yeah, yeah. yeah. I will say the melee mode, it's different because mm. obviously like I don't, I try not to shoot from just, I try not to play that style, but mm. I'm so used to it. So like when I come up to a, uh, I was saving Nick Valentine in the vaults okay. and it's one of like one of the first missions for like the main storyline and you have to go into the vaults and there's a lot of like descending. So you have a lot of like good sniper moments mm. and I'm like, this is different because like the path to get to everybody, like, the path is all lit up mm. in order to play that build. You have to like sneak around. So I'm just like not used to like sneaking and, but it's really like once you get up there, once you get up and close, like that's the challenge is getting up and close. Cause once you're up and close, yeah. Uh, they go down easy pretty easily yeah if you sneak attack you can usually one shot somebody yeah it's like cheeto chop right on the neck it can be satisfying to play stealthily and stuff like that sometimes even just like an extra challenge almost on yourself to do something different yeah that or just melee i'm such a ranged fighter in these games that melee is yeah i don't you don't hear too many people playing those games as melee people no but apparently no it's not but apparently the the builds for in those games are like you can play melee really good. Oh, They're pretty yeah. strong. I'm sure I could see that not being super balanced and stuff just because it's not mm-hmm. like a core aspect of the game. Exactly. I'm also playing a lot of uh, Dress... Not Dress Rosa. <laughs> I just saw it, so I said it. Uh, Fallout Shelter on the phone. Okay. Okay. That's so I'll be like watching One Piece. One. Yep. It's really... I mean, 
the only thing I don't like about it is like once you kind of do the th like all the stuff, like you're kind of just done. Like once you build it, mm -hmm. there's not much to it. It kind of reminds me of like a lesser Stardew Valley. Like it, it's really easy to get hooked into multiple versions of the game, but once you get to a point, it's like there's not much more you can do. Right. Oh yeah, I, I get that. I've played a lot of Stardew Valley. <laughs> hey, new update. Yeah, I know. New story. I, I still know. haven't. I was talking about it, but I just I'm waiting for his new game, Haunted Chocolatier, to come out. When's that coming out? No idea. He keeps pushing it back. It's fair. Yeah, yeah. he keeps he keeps releasing more updates to Stardew Valley, even though he says he's done with it. <laughs> I mean, you gotta pay the bills. Yeah, yeah, and that's fair. But I, I love that game. Don't get me wrong. It's just it's hard to want to after playing so much to want to go back. Like some extra NPCs and maybe yeah. a different farm that you can start on just isn't quite enough to. But like, if you have that itch, it's kind of nice to be like, ooh, what else is there? That's true. I just, that's kind of like where back, I'm at. Yeah, when you do go I, back, it's nice to have all that extra stuff. Yeah, so I kind of want to play it. I kind of want to get Sapphire into it, but I feel like if I get her into it, she's going to be hooked. Hooked. Yeah, yeah. That is yeah. a game that has eaten many hours of my life. Another game I've been, uh, another phone game I've been hooked on is Pokemon MMO. Okay. So I'm trying to get it's. Uh, do you remember what that is? Yeah, I remember you talking yeah, about it. Yeah, it's all the ROMs from Generation One through Five put together in like an MMO game. It's mm. great. That does sound. Pretty awesome. And like so. the game's like modified too, so like the gyms are a little bit more tricky. Like they actually have like more a challenge. Yeah, yeah, like the um, I just beat Jasmine okay. and Johto. That was the first region I started out on. So I was playing Jasmine. Jasmine's pretty tough. Like I've always had difficulties facing her. Who is what does she have? Uh she has Steelix. Okay, okay. Steel Pokemon? Yes. Okay. Um she's in Olivine City in Johto. Okay. If you remember. Fairly little. Okay. I played um, mostly a lot of fire red and fire red mods. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that's where I was at, and they added like um, Skarmory to her team, which like naturally makes sense because it's the other Steel Johto Pokemon, and then uh, another Magnet. Oh, oh, Fortress okay. is the other Steel one. Like basically the ones that would make sense. Right. Right. For the gym. So it's really nice. I would recommend it. If you're a Pokemon fan and you want to like have that immersive experience, like that, this is like the game that like Nintendo should have been making. Yeah. I mean, it is an idea that kind of seems like a no brainer when you think about it. Mm -hmm. Why haven't they done that yet? There's a lot of them. Yeah. Like they just made uh, Fire Red a phone game. Yep. Yeah. And you just sell it for five bucks. Like, oh, yeah. Yeah, and I don't think Nintendo is necessarily, or Pokemon is in the business of video. I don't know some of that stuff with their, especially specifically Pokemon games. I always yeah. it just seems like it's like a given to them, like taking it for granted for a long time. Just yeah. keep releasing the next game and just raking the money and never really try to innovate or change anything. Yeah, yeah, I feel that. I'm covering Pokemon so much, but yeah, that is like the overwhelming. I think there was a vote. I was doing a couple turn. I'm still doing tourneys for like the ultimate Pokemon game. Mm. I made it through four generations. This tournament's going a lot slower just because I kind of just do it when I have the motivation to do it. Mm. But it's less March Madness. It's more just whenever. Right. Um, once we get an actual tournament, then it'll be like a da a daily thing. And I do have Jodo done, the rankings and everything done, okay. which I should get your opinion on that because it. I don't know how I feel about the seedings sometimes. Okay. okay. But, um, yeah, like, it, it was a fun game. Pokemon MMO is just one of those. Right now, I'm trying to just build the ultimate team, so I'm trying to get the higher IVs. Mm. So I'm just trying to farm Pokemon so I can have, a, like, a competitive team. Yeah, it definitely it feels like it gives you a lot more uh, incentive to make something, like, that strong and kind of go all out when there's yeah. actually, like, a challenge. And if, like, there's other people that you're kind of competing mm -hmm. against and stuff like that, it really, like, kind of incentivizes you to do that kind of, like, IV right. training or EV training and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, because you're showing off to other people, like, you are you can't just catch a Pokemon and be like, haha, I'm strong now. It's No, you have to get the right Pokemon with the right natures, IVs. Yep, train it's interesting. Right yep. Oh, yeah. And it definitely gets a lot more interesting, I think, because there's, like, no point in doing that in most Pokemon mm -hmm. games. Or the Safari Zone that I'm doing for um, in Johto right now. Mm. They Hard Cold Soul Silver adds a second Safari Zone to the game, and like I can get Gen Four, Gen Five, Gen Three Pokemon within that Safari Zone, which makes sense because you think Safari, you think different region. Right. Exactly. So pretty cool. Oh, uh, let's get into the news. It's time okay. for a new squeaky. Oh yeah. Think, wow, 
wow. Frank Rillo, <laughs> Crossbones from the MCU, is crossing over to DC to work with James Gunn. He's going to be in the new Peacemaker Season 2 as Rick Flagg Sr. Interesting. I yeah, that. that's the new rumor of the day. That's a, I, I want my, my immediate response is just why? Mm-hmm. Why do we need a Rick Flagg Sr.? Yeah. And especially, a, presumably, an important role. But the first season of Peacemaker was so good and so a Suicide Squad that I, yep. I'm here for it. Just so we know, this is a new continuity. Yes. So store like, and it's supposed to, like, Peacemaker season two is supposed to be in like separate from season one. Yeah, it, season two is part of the new universe, right? Yeah, but the stuff before is not. Ye, somehow. Yeah, yeah. It's going to be interesting. However, if we do carry on the story mm. from season one in Suicide Squad. That would be interesting because Peacemaker did kill right. Rick Flag Jr. So it's a possible maybe like a interesting story or something like that. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe it's not interesting because revenge is always the easy. It seems like the obvious storyline here, but it's James Gunn. Right. So. Right. I didn't expect transforming butterflies in the first <laughs> season either. So. Or the just the dance sequence in the beginning. Yeah. So good. Do you really want to really want to taste it? <laughs> it's good. All right, moving on. This is the big one. Rolf Isner has just been cast as Galactus in the new Fantastic Form film. Who? Rolf Isner, I believe is his name. Who is that? Who is he in? Uh, he was in Guardians of the Galaxy. He's like a random person. I don't really know much about him. Okay. I'm more... Oh, Ralph and Nesson. Okay, My bad. I wrote that wrong. Um, okay, I have seen him before. Yeah, he looks really familiar. He was in Chernobyl, uh, The Green Knight. He was in Harry Potter. Okay. That's probably what Oh, he was in Game of Thrones as Dagmar? Okay. Like, I recognize him. Yeah, I definitely recognize him. Not, nothing's, like, shooting out at me, like, oh, that's that guy, but I've definitely He's seen him before. Not who I imagine is Galactus, but, like, looking at his face, I'm like, that. See, he looks like Galactus. I feel like it's it's probably got a lot to do with the voice. That too. I have a, it'd be very Thanos like, I assume. Yeah. As far as like like the underlying features are still there, but it's a it's a different you know, he's not Galactus is a human, so just the booming nature of Galactus. Mm. I don't know. I mean in, I'm interested. I feel like that film is part of like the, the I mean he's not I a mean, giant space cloud. So that's a good that's a yes. good start. We should save this because this goes into uh, <laughs> kind of, our yeah. actual to- topic. All right, one last thing. Uh, John Malkovich. I recognize the name. I recognize him, but I don't like being John Mal- Malkovich. Yeah, he's going to be in it. Who is he playing? Don't, don't know. know. Okay, well, I he's love just John cast. Malkovich. He's great. Yeah. yeah, he's one of the one of the greats. And then uh, last little bit, One Piece, the Elgaf, right? Elbaf. Elbaf arc. Yeah, E L B A F. Yes, I wrote this. I wrote. Ed Graff. <laughs> it was wrong. Are you really a One Piece fan? <laughs> and I remember Elbath. I'm my bad. I bad. You know what state I was. I told you. Uh, the rumor is it's going to be starting in November 2024, but it is possible that it's delayed. It's part of the final saga. Hmm. I don't. It might be the final arc as well. Yeah, I mean, he's been talking about how it's going to be coming to an end soon. Which I think is yeah. probably like good as much as I love the show and I would love for it to go on forever, but I'd rather get an actual ending than yeah. not have an ending. I think uh, an ending would be good. It's, it's, I like the fact that I'm watching it and being able to catch up at the end knowing that there is an ending. Right. I feel like it like gives purpose. It's not like, oh, it's forever going. It's just it doesn't yeah. have... One Piece has always been that show that I always feel like it's working towards a great ending, mm. but there's just so much great story to be told. Absolutely, like you're told, you're telling an epic, uh, an epic life, an epic tale from beginning to end, almost. I'd say there's kind of a similar thing with uh, Hunter Hunter, which is also like one of my top five. Hunter anime Times Hunter. Time. Hunter Hunter. <laughs> uh, top five for sure, easily. Uh, there's like 300 episodes and. Uh, the creator of the manga had stopped writing for uh-huh. a long time before yeah. the show even ended. So it doesn't really like, it doesn't have an ending per se, but it, it does just, like end at, at the end of like an arc that is okay. 
pretty sufficient as an ending. Like it feels like it could be an ending, even though there's yeah. definitely still a lot more story to be told. So at least it has that. But I understand that feeling of like, because even going into it, knowing that it didn't end, and yeah, yeah it's kind of hard. But it is still so great. It's like watching Game of Thrones now and trying to convince someone to watch Game of Thrones. It's like the story is amazing. It just ends really like no You'll one be likes so the mad ending. When it's over. That you will regret it. You'll be mad it. Yeah. because it should have been better. Yeah. It's almost like should I even watch it? They're like you should. I don't I, I don't remember the last time I told somebody to watch Game of Thrones. <sighs> to be honest. It's a it's a five show up until season yeah, but seven. It's, but it, it, I know it's so I hard know. to even try to sell it. It becomes song. a three, it becomes popular. It's, yeah. Alright, should we get into our main story? Sure. Sure. Our main focal point. The big question. Superheroes. Or video games. I think the big question about this too. This is like the first one I wrote. Like I wrote up. And I feel like this is a way, good way to judge this. What are you more excited for moving forward? Of everything that's like mm. potentially could come out. So like what do we look forward to? I'll be honest. There's there's one movie I'm looking forward to. Okay. And that's Deadpool and Wolverine. Yep. Aside from that, there isn't really any especially in the, the superhero realm anything that i'm like super hyped about i guess i'd yeah. say maybe like the batman 2 but then that got pushed back in another year and yeah. i kind of get the feeling that that might not even happen after that amount of time it might not happen. well that's that's the thing like superheroes outside of the boys season four mm. which i would put on that list of something i'm yeah like, that's static that's about. i was thinking movies but yeah yes um invincible season three whenever yep. that does drop um outside of that though there really isn't much for superheroes outside of deadpool and wolverine yep which is the like the biggest superhero movie to come out since like endgame probably yeah maybe maybe no way home potentially yeah, potentially yeah at least the hype around it it's starting to get hyped it's yeah. and marvel's talking about how they made a mistake and how the line um deadpool is going to be marvel jesus is like kind of factual like this is the they're they're re, like leaning on deadpool to and ryan wilson yeah ryan reynolds ryan wilson, <laughs> ryan reynolds <laughs> killing it like they're they're leaning on him to like essentially get people hyped for the mcu yep. get hype for x-men mm-hmm. and i even wrote on here too like is x-men the answer i i don't know i don't know how you even i don't know the the hype the time it's hard to like even be excited for it with everything else that's happened already. Cause like, what do we get into, you know, like in the, the world has just become so convoluted in the Marvel universe. And yeah. There's just so much and everything has to like somehow make sense with each other. I feel like they made a mistake by not leaning into the world, the world building mm-hmm. that um, end game left. Yep. Cause it was exciting. Like five years people had a time skip of five years mm. so you have one half the population essentially being traumatized for the fact that like they lost their loved ones they had to live with that reality mm-hmm. or it's the trauma of being misplaced yep like you come and, back five years later and yeah now what do you do and falcon and winter soldier kind of teased the idea no way home um far from home teased the idea um WandaVision also like they teased the yeah, idea, yeah. but they never really like dove into it. Dove deep. Yeah. And I feel like it would have been big. Dang cats. <laughs> but like it, it would have been better if they would have like dove in or if there would have been a TV series like right afterwards, just dealing with that. The fallout. Yeah. And yeah. I feel like everything they do just it just it barely worked it off like off each other. Every film, every T V show just felt very isolated. Yeah. And like in, we... in like a bad way, like I don't even think because I I feel like part of the problem was that maybe they should have went for more of like a comic book style world mm-hmm. where not necessarily everything needs to like interact with each other. You know, there's some like plausible deniability. We're taking a break. far as what i was saying uh just basically i think putting themselves having trying to expand the roster so much and have mm-hmm. everything 
still be in the same like universe slash world, uh, I think kind of set them up for failure in a way because everything needs to have consequences in something else with yep. the way that they kind of so closely interlocked everything to where when we have like a movie like the uh, Immortals, um, it just feels like it it does feel so isolated and not connected mm-hmm. because it's not being forced into right. every other movie. But it was such a, should have been a world shattering movie. Exactly. It's almost like a phase two problem. Mm. You know, like phase two kind of had that issue where I think we watched, I don't know if we didn't watch Thor together, but I remember we were watching Thor and talking about this at the time where like, it was like, where are the Avengers? Yeah. You know, like the universe is potentially ending here, mm. but it, like, that's what the movie was trying to sell us. But it's like, okay, well, Iron Man's not here. Right. Must not be that big of a deal. Yeah. Right. I mean, Captain America isn't here. The government isn't like, it's a side adventure, but it's not a side adventure. Whereas like Guardians of the Galaxy 3 wasn't part of this like larger story. It was mm. their story. Mm. And that's another feel. I feel like Marvel struggles just telling, at least lately, just great stories about the on heroes that we had. Yeah. Individually that are, that sit, you know, that aren't banking on like, what's going to happen in the future or the impact mm. it's going to have in the MCU, just like good middle ending and beginning. I think the only movies that really did that was Spider-Man No Way Home mm. on top of Black Panther, Black Panther Wakanda Forever. I still haven't seen that one. It's it's good. Yeah. I I put it in the great tier. I think it's a great movie. What about, I, don't, I mean, you, what about Guardians? Oh, Guardians is yeah, there too. Yeah. Guardians is a great individual tell. But the movies that like felt like should have been a bigger crossover like doctor strange like it was great but it wasn't like the movie it wasn't this universe there isn't like this big of like what are we're not really revolving into anything and ant-man 3 was supposed to do that i haven't seen that one either that's that's just where my marvel life has been that's how it, little i it wasn't great yep. you, you would have watched it and be like wow mm. that was trash because it it pretty much was. It was very CGI heavy. It was like, hey, we're going to introduce Kang as this great threat, but like they never treated and respected him as this great threat. Mm. So, I don't know. Sup- like superheroes is it, they're falling off a little bit, but I think Marvel knows that. They just admitted this week that they made a huge mistake that they were just they were just making content to make content. They weren't trying to make great content. I, I think I heard something about them saying that they were going to try to go back to like two movies a year or something like that. Yeah. Again. But I feel like they said that a few years ago, too. Two movies a year, um, two to three movies a year. I think they said two, and then, like, a TV show here and there. Yeah. And I think that's the best I think that's the best strategy. Withdraw a little bit. Mm. And only and release good stuff. Great stuff. Yeah, great stuff. Yeah. They've been... Like, I can't even say Phase 4 and Phase 5 is utterly that bad. It's just... Meh. It, like it's not a reason to watch it. Mm-hmm. Good is not good enough anymore. We're not we're not starving for superhero content. That is absolutely the truth. So, but yeah, the whole superhero is falling. It's we're in this weird break now. We only have one MCU project, maybe two, if a TV show gets announced. Mm. Um, we have Deadpool, Wolverine. That's supposed. To, it looks like it's going to be great. Yes. Yeah. It looks like it's going to bring him back. If it isn't great and it's trash oh man that, yikes that marvel is just done right i don't There's think no it's done uh, but it's yeah. on life support yeah it's it's hard to recover from that this is like all the stars aligning hugh jackman back as wolverine it's everything everyone wanted mm-hmm. and if it doesn't work then i don't know what could possibly work it's not yeah. going to be some new fantastic four no and that's where we get to dceu mm-hmm. you know james gunn um, James Gunn just released the picture. You should look it up if you haven't already. Um, he just released the picture of the new Superman in the costume. I completely blanking on the actor's name who's playing him. Um, with Metropolis in the background, and there is a laser, a sky beam, but not technically a sky beam because it's not straight in the air, but it is a sky beam of sorts of a laser shooting out from the ground out of of the sky and you see Superman putting on his suit. Okay. I see. And it, and it, it's hype. Yeah. But yeah. That looks good. The suit looks good. It looks like a Superman. It does. It kind of looks kind of cheap, but also looks practical. So I, I like the practicality of it. Yeah. Um, let's lay out 
superheroes and video games. Like, let's let's lay it out and compare. Okay, so right now for we'll start out with superheroes. We have the MCU universe. So right now, Deadpool, Wolverine, um, Captain America four, eventually Daredevil, Thunderbolts movie, and then the big Kang potential Kang movie. I they or Avengers that. Five. Yeah, I thought they. Yeah, I thought they scrapped the Kang thing entirely. No, they're potentially recasting Kang. Okay. So he's going to be a part. They. I, don't, I keep hearing rumors that he's going to be a part of it. That he's still going to be like the main antagonist, but he might share the spotlight too with maybe like Doom. Yeah, I mean, I love Doctor Doom. I just hope he's not like shoehorned in as a as a fix. I don't know. I, yeah. It's one of those things you can't have Dr. Doom without like an established fantastic four first. Well, that's coming too. fantastic yeah. four is also, I didn't write it down, but that's yeah. the big, that's the big movie. And I do have really high hopes for fantastic four. I mean, I don't know. I, the question comes up like, do does anyone even just care about the fantastic four anymore? I kind of do. I mean, they have Pedro Pascal. Yeah. Well, he yeah, is the yeah, ultimate yeah, dad. Yeah, no, but I'm saying like the fantastic four as like a superhero team. They're very much like from the 60s. Yeah. Like even in the comics, they were like abandoned for long periods of time. Like well, just like forgotten about. Like, yeah, these are kind of too old. Nobody cares about the Fantastic Four anymore. Well, what's, 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 um, let's realize how this works, right? Okay. We don't care. Media doesn't care until we have a reason to care. Yeah. Think Fallout. That's fair. The TV show. Fallout was kind of dying a little bit. Hmm. Bethesda was kind of dying a little bit. Right? Then, out of nowhere, Fallout, the show comes out. There wasn't... There was some hype. It wasn't super hype. It wasn't like the show that we were looking forward to. But it was up there. It was like, oh, this might be good. Fallout comes out. It's fantastic. It's amazing. I think we... I rated it a 4+. plus, Like, really up there. Fallout became one of the most like highly sold like sold out games in the last month. It was one of the most streamed games, one of the most like I'm seeing Fallout content everywhere now because of the show. Fallout is now in when it wasn't two months ago. Yeah. And that's kind of I feel like Fantastic Four. If they make a great movie, the audience will then be there. If they make if you make it, they will come. I, I agree to to an extent. But I, the, you could say the same thing about any of the other franchises in Marvel. That's fair. You know, Fantastic Four. I was just saying, like, there's just, like, a whole lot of hype on the name Fantastic Four when it really just doesn't mean anything anymore, in my opinion. Yeah, but I think the, na- the name is there. Yeah. And I think if you do make a great movie, as long as it's a 4+, plus, I think the audience will be there, and I think the hype moving forward will be certainly there. I will agree, though, that I don't think there is much hype for the Fantastic Four. I think, I think most of the hype... For me personally, for the Fantastic Four, it would be more just for Doctor Doom than for actual Fantastic Four. I think Galactus, man. And think Galactus. Galactus is a crazy villain, but I don't find him all that interesting. Yeah, he is kind of one track. Well, the, the concept is kind of, but I do the the more complexities that that he isn't actually a villain. He's just a. He's just a force in the universe. Yeah, he just planets. needs to eat, man. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And so I mean, it's interesting, but it's also not like. I don't know. He's not the most like charismatic mm. or the most like. I don't hear anybody say their v- favorite villain is Galactus. It's fair. That is fair. Though Doctor I feel Doom, like there though. is Fantastic Four fanboys that might like name them, but they're older. Yeah, right. And People that were in the. We are now in the demographic, the target demographic, the millennials. Fantastic Four is kind of. We remember the uh, early two thousands movies. Yes, yep. I do think there's an audience. Mm. I do I do think there's an audience. If it is great, there will be hype. Yep. Same with the X Men. Yeah. X Men ninety seven's been a hit. Yeah, I think I think the X Men has more on its name at this I agree. point than the Fantastic Four. Um so let's continue on because we have the MCU, we have the D C E U technically, mm. and all the two thousand movies before that. Um as well as the Spider Man films, the f- all the X Men franchise. This is like everything that's come out. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but moving forward, we have the DCU, we have the DCU, um, we have The Boys, Season 4 onward, Invincible Season 3 onward, Gen V, t- Season 2, yeah. I think they yeah. are continuing. Are they are still continuing with that? Yep. Um, I'd be curious to see where that goes without so many, like, if it's going to turn into more of a, like, kind of crossover with The Boys, or because they just like so many characters now. The 
yeah, the two I forget their names. The Sam, the Sam, crazy yep, one, and, and then the Kate. Yep, those two were in the trailer for yeah, the boys. Going to the boys. I and... think it'll be more crossover, but I think they'll be in their own territory for spinoff. Mm. They'll be doing with their own thing. Can I can I also just say another side note that uh, so who would have guessed in 2024 that Amazon would be the one killing it in the superhero genre? <laughs> I superhero don't think genre. anyone. Yeah. And the delivery shows, service? Yeah, uh, TV shows in general. I mean, Fallout, that Amazon as well. Yeah, they're killing it. Yeah. Who thought? They're leading the way right now. Yeah. They're beating Disney, I would say. Because yeah, like, we're in a gap year. We're mm. in a gap year for MCU. We're in a gap year for DCU. Because DCU is another one that's like could potentially bring back the reins. Because yeah. you have Superman. This is James Gunn. Yeah, I know. But it's just like, the, I don't know anybody that's like fans of DC anymore i mean i'm I'm pretty hyped yeah we're also we're, in a gap ahead, year yeah. we will get hyped next year but we also do we do have joker and harley quinn yeah and, and that looks interesting I, I, I am excited to see that i was a big fan of the joker but it's it's i mean it is dc but it's also kind of mm-hmm. not quite the same it's definitely yeah. not a superhero movie so I think the way we're laying out superheroes right now, MCU is in a gap year. We have Deadpool and Wolverine, which could very, very much take that attention back mm. onto superheroes. We have DCU coming out next year mm. with more Marvel stuff, but it's going to take a while for Marvel to kind of get in the gear, even if Deadpool is a success. We do have the Boys Season 4, which will... If Deadpool, if the Boys Season 4 and Deadpool both land, which I think at least the boys will... The hype for superheroes will slowly come back. We will slowly want more. But it really depends on 2025. Does yeah. Superman, is it is it going to land? Is it going to be a hit? Is Creature's Commando going to be a hit? Is uh, Peacemaker Season 2 going to be a hit? Mm-hmm. Um, is the boys going to continue their dominance? Invincible, all these shows. Right. Um, whereas video games, we're now in a gap year. There is... You can. I already made this argument that video games, the new video game era, has taken over. Yep. But let's lay it out. We have Fallout recently. We are confirmed season two is coming out, as well as Last of Us is here. So it's season one, and that was a huge hit. Season two is being filmed currently. We have Twisted Metal. Metal. Mm. Season one was a hit. Surprisingly, mm. I didn't think it was going to be good. It was great. Season two is going to be coming out shortly. Um, Five Nights at Freddy's wasn't good, but it was a hit. <laughs> yeah, I think it, it was good for the people that were really big fans of Five Nights at Freddy's. Sonic has been huge this year. Knuckles just came out. I haven't heard very good things about Knuckles. I heard it was okay. I heard it was good. But Sonic 3 with Shadow, Keanu Reeves playing Sh- yeah. Shadow. Many time you have Keanu Reeves attached to you. But let's look at the future, too. We have the season twos of Last of Us and Fallout. We have God of War potentially coming out. Through Amazon. That would, that would be cool. Um, the Zelda movie. Yeah. Mario's second film. Nintendo in general. On top of Halo, which is kind of eh. Which is kind of eh. Castlevania and Arcane, which are both been told. Uh, I've been told I, they're great. I, you know, out of like all of these shows that you've listed, Castlevania is like one of the only ones I've seen. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> it is good. It is really good. The animation is good. And then there's, I think I missed out, Gran Turismo, Mortal Kombat, or other ones that were, were recently released. You're behind, I man. I haven't seen any of these except for Castlevania. So, like, the question is... Well, I did see the Mario movie. I did watch that one. Yeah. And, like, Nintendo has a huge... Like, I feel like Nintendo could easily make a movie universe that we would all be into. Yeah. I think if the quality keeps up. I mean, if you get a good Zelda movie, you bring in Sonic. My, my question is... Well, Sonic's not really Nintendo. But uh, Zelda movie animated or live action? I think it's going to be live action. It should be animated. Yeah, it should be animated. That's what I think. It should be. It should, be. It should have some really stylized. For one reason. 3D animation. Which is why I said Sonic. Because they have one big film that they could do that would be huge. Smash Brothers. Sma- Super Smash Brothers. <laughs> yeah. Like, would you not be hyped for that movie if they built it up like the Avengers? I don't know. What's I guess I've never like played any of the... 
like campaigns or anything. So I don't even know if there's even is there even a story at all or there like the first one is like it's you know a child's imagination okay. and like it's the hand master hand controlling everyone as puppets. Okay. So okay. there's like that basic storyline. Like Lego movie style. Yeah. There's also the fact that like you could you don't have there isn't a single story you really have to adapt. Yep. You could make your own Super Smash Bros movie you can make it like villains versus heroes you can make it like this other threat you just have it like mortal Kombat style where they all yeah. come into a different world and have to fight as champions exactly and like there's so many different like i feel like movies you can make you could make a specific mario kart movie if you mm. wanted to yep you could make a luigi's mansion movie if you wanted to and like that one probably would have the most interest. luigi's mansion yeah just I mean, because Charlie it's Day. Like, yeah just because it's like that and like actually has a really cool interesting premise kind of spooky and you know ghosts mm-hmm. and just different yeah so I, the way i look at this is like i think it's kind of a toss-up i do think video games have kind of taken over i think fall like i think executives are looking at fallout mm-hmm. and i think for both producers of like the films and the video games they're looking at this like oh there is a huge market, not just for films, but for video game boost. Mm. And I know companies are looking at this. They're looking, they're like, what IP do we have? What can we buy? What can we sell? How can we get like creators who know the games, who know the fan base, and actually to deliver the story that people want? Because mm. Fallout is Fallout to a T. Last of Us is Last of Us to a T. And everything they added extra is like arguably better. Like, it's lore that, like, I'm like, yes, give me new lore because it's respecting the franchise. Hmm. Twisted Metal was just fun. Yep. And I like the fact that these, uh, we're finally getting video game adaptations that respect yeah. the fan base, respect the game, and make it that game. And we, it's not, we weren't talking about Halo in this, right? Oh, no. Halo is <laughs> the example of, like, what is. to do? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of like the the old school Mario movie well, example. Halo arguably is big was always bigger than Fallout. Yeah, at least the peak of at, Halo. Yeah, definitely at the peak. Um, I more think recently, I don't think very many people care about Halo. No, no. They killed that franchise pretty good. They did, and but like it wasn't like Fallout was like that better. It just kind of has like, like that staying power. Mm. It's not overdone. We're kind of dying for more Fallout at this point because there's so space in between where halo kind of just they're two different games you can make a halo game easier than a fallout game yeah yeah just by the nature of rpg shooter yeah yeah definitely because it's more yeah but i will say like followed it right they made the game and now there's this huge hit there's this huge boom content creators prior to the kendrick uh drake beef it was all fallout fallout followed Mm. And I think there is, since this is a gap year, if Marvel fumbles the bag, if the boys fumble the bag, are we? do we give a shit about superheroes? We would have to have something amazing to happen for us to really buy in. Yeah, I, I do agree that, I mean, if like Wolverine fails, Deadpool Wolverine fails, and the boys slash Invincible... I would say let's we'll say the boys because Invincible already had its twenty twenty four. That's fair. That's fair. This year, yeah. So if the boys happen to fail, I don't. I don't, I don't think it's that. happening. It's going to be amazing. Yeah, I don't see that happening. But if boys, it though. does, I also I also realistically don't see Deadpool and Wolverine failing. Right, but that's the thing. Every superhero project has gone down. Yeah. The boys, unless it ends. Yeah, I mean, eventually it won't be able to keep up forever. That's for yeah, sure. it will have to die, or it would have to die slowly. Yeah, and just like I, the Marvels dying slowly. Ideally, realistically, I will. I mean, I don't know what their plans are, but maybe one more season. I think five seasons is kind of like the perfect number for most shows. I, this feels like the penultimate. Yeah. Um, or the penultimate. The penultimate season. Yeah, I think I think uh, five seasons is a is a good amount for most shows. Once you start getting a little bit further than that, things start to yeah. get messy. I can't. Uh, it, I can't think of too many shows. I mean, it feels like it's five seasons. Coming from somebody that has watched all of Supernatural multiple times, we gotta, <laughs> five we gotta, seasons is perfect. We gotta save it for the the boys preview that we're doing soon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
I say we because I just added you into it. Oh yeah, yeah, I'm in. Um. So yeah, all right. My answer to this is I think there is. What's we'll what's the answer to the final question and we'll close out. Okay. And the final the question is what's going to take place moving forward? Is it going to be superheroes, or is it going to be video game adaptations? The way I see it is I think there's going to be a huge shift to video game adaptations. I think in the next year, we're getting waves of announcements that are going to be pushed for franchises in the video game realm. I think businesses see too much. What's happening with Fallout, what's happening with Last of Us, and I think they're very much like, yes, this is what we want. However, I do think there is a chance this year... And next year for superheroes to come back. I don't think they're going to take over again. No, I don't think we'll ever get back to the place that we were in during, you know, Infinity but I War. I do think there's a chance that it becomes Star Wars. In the sense that it will always be around. Yeah. It will be hype oh, in the moment. I, I, yeah, I don't think that we'll ever just not have superhero movies anymore. Mm. I think it'd take a, a lot for that to just completely fall off. Even if they're rebooting Batman again in five years, I don't yeah. see that that'll ever just be completely gone. No. The other question with the video game thing, though, is what's going to stop the video game adaptations from just going the same way, just becoming way over abundant and not good and rushed and just I cash don't... grabs? I don't think it's going to stop unless capitalism itself yeah. stops. Yep. I don't think that's going to be the case. But I think of this as like the Western genre mm. and now the superhero genre and the young adult. Like eventually it's going to be overdone mm. and done the death and it's going to die. Because that's what we see in most genres. Yep. We kind of like even um, early 2000s and all the raunch comedies. We don't get those anymore <laughs> because we kind of done them to yeah. death. Yeah. That and the time has changed. So, so I think... I think the video game era is going to have its run, mm-hmm. and I'm excited for it. I'm yep. here for it. Um, I, I think that's I think that's where we're headed to. I hope superheroes come back and it stays like it is. Uh, you know, Star Wars. Hopefully, Game of Thrones can be in that. Star Wars can take a break for a little while. I mean, it's it's, it's good. The only way I'm ever going to get back into Star Wars is if they do like take a break for a long time, and I'm able to watch everything. Watch kinda, Andor. Yeah, you keep saying that. But. I just, me and Donald just did our review for Rogue One. So much better after watching Andor. Yeah. Probably because I understand and like Cassian Andor the character now, whereas I did not understand him the first time watching it through. Okay. So, I uh, Star Wars is. We don't need to They're going to ramp it up we don't more. Need, we don't need to get into our Star Wars debate that we get into every time, I suppose. That is fair. Um, right. I do have a question for you, though. Yes. If you So you're talking about video game adaptations. What video game do you think would be the best or do you want to see as an adaptation the most? What video game that I want to see? Yeah, that has oh, a video. I have. I've, I've been, I talked about this last time, too. Yeah. Um, I think God of War would be great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that that'd be off the table because you mentioned it. So yeah, that'd be huge. Your your own brainchild that you haven't heard anything. The about. The one that I have, and I listed it. Okay. It's the it. last thing I listed in questions. Mass Effect. Mass Effect. I should have known you would say that. I just think there's. I know you don't like sci-fi superheroes. We talked about this before. I think Mass Effect has that realm that it can get into that it can almost take Star Wars out. Yeah. yeah. It has and there, Star Trek. There's been a lot of franchises that have definitely been attempting that, especially lately, and I mm-hmm. don't think any of them have even come close. I think Mass Effect, if done correctly, like HBO show, Amazon show, and they get the Mass Effect a feel or feel for it, I think they can do it. I also think I already said this Nintendo. Yeah, I think Nintendo is the Nintendo's the best bet. Yeah, I will say this about the Nintendo though; those are like. It's like all kind of kids' Child. movies. Yeah. yeah. Which I think it can be a lot of fun and stuff like that, but there's not... But what was Marvel? Yeah. But I... but there's a little different translation between like adult superheroes and literal like Kirby. That's, that's fair. Yeah. That's fair. I don't know. I think if I look at like what can be the next MCU, mm. I think Nintendo. Yeah. As far as like a major franchise, I mean, I could see that just like interlocking and stuff. They mm-hmm. have all the IPs and stuff like that already that they Exactly. Need. So I 
I think it would be Nintendo or Nintendo in as whole. Otherwise, Mass Effect Red Dead Redemption. I think we can have great stories. I don't. I can't think of like one franchise on the top of my head that's not already like a franchise of sorts that can really take the MCU. Yeah. Uh, mold. I don't think it would have any chance to take on like the MCU. But if I had a pick, I think I would choose something from FromSoft, like Dark Souls. Dark Souls. And see that in like a live action. Dark, Maybe like gritty. I... Some sort. It would be interesting. It would have to figure out a way to kind of adapt the idea of like a character that just keeps dying mm-hmm. over and over again, kind of. But I think yeah. done the Ooh. right way would be a very interesting. That world. would be a good take. I mean, the worlds and like the lore and stuff like that is so crazy in all those games. I'm yeah. really a big fan of the dark gothic kind of. I think that could be Lovecraftian style Game of Thrones like. Where it takes over, like, like Fallout right now and Last yeah. of Us are taking over in, like, the Game of Thrones space, where it's kind of taking the medium, but it's not Marvel in that aspect, where it's, yeah. like, this huge franchise. It's just a great show that everybody yeah, decides yeah. to watch. It definitely would be its own thing. Uh, I feel like I'd, I'd foresee it as almost, I mean, you've have you seen Samurai Jack? I know that's a cartoon. Yes. But, like, not a lot of talking, mostly mm-hmm. just about the visuals and, you know, music and that kind of stuff, the score. And just like a, a visual experience, you know, kind of thing. Yeah, I think that that would be pretty, pretty cool. Big, big Dark Souls from South End, Bloodborne, so, any of you, their franchises, Elden Ring. So you think Dark Souls that would be the meeting? That would pick. be. I would get hyped for that. God yeah. of War is probably the other one that I would get hyped for. I can't really think of too many other like video. For game Dead Redemption. Uh, Red Dead Redemption would be weird. It'd be full circle for yeah. Red Dead Redemption because it'd be like, hey, Western video game. <laughs> <laughs> western video game adaptation that's right guys we're bringing the western back i will say that like red dead redemption is already like almost a movie yeah yeah like some of those games that are like so linear and story based that it's almost like why do you need to make this into a movie when you've already got like a 16 hour version of it that yeah i mean like something. last of us was like that too yeah but i guess they at least told a different story kind of, i guess kind of no it was the same story yeah it was Last of Us says you can do it. Yeah, and also I feel like but Red Dead Redemption. Last of Us, so it's good. Watch it. <laughs> All right. Well, I have nothing more on this. Yeah, My answer can... is I think it's going to be a shared, but I think video games are going to take hold. Yeah, I could see a, a big boom in in video game stuff. I mean, we're already obviously seeing it with Fallout and Twisted Metal, and, and mm. you know it's a slow start, but it'll pop off. I'm sure. For sure. All right. Thank you, Brandon. I will uh, see you in the next episode, which will be airing next week after this episode. Hell all right. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Check us out on TikTok and all the social medias. And, yeah, we're out. Goodbye. Surprise. We're back because Tom's here. We're doing a double header. We're talking Warhammer soon. That's going to be next week for you guys. But, Tom, I wanted, I wanted your uh, weigh in on this. Superheroes versus video games. Sure. Moving on forward, in your opinion, what do you think Hollywood's going to focus on more? What's going to be the prime focus, and what are we going to get moving? Um, yeah, I think we are moving into video games. I think we're moving into the video game territory. Um, Last of Us and Fallout have, I think, shown that they can be successful and popular for people even that haven't played the games. Exactly, yeah. Um, and I really think uh, Marvel's dying. Mar- Marvel's, think... Marvel's on the way out. They have they hit their stride. They got their money. I think people mm-hmm. are getting so inundated with it that they're getting a little sick of it. Yeah, and then we were talking about this too early in the podcast because there's been a lot of news. Marvel has pretty much openly admitted that they fucked up, that they messed up, and that they are taking their course of humble pie mm. and trying to move forward with less content, but great content. Mm. And there is a lot more hype for Deadpool and Wolverine. <clears throat> I mean, Brandon kind of just talked about how if this movie doesn't hit, if this movie is a stinker, if it's a three minus or under, that the MCU might be dead. Yeah. And if you can't make Deadpool happen by itself, there's no hope for you. Yeah, you get mm-hmm. to throw Hugh Jackman Wolverine in there and you still can't make it work, then... Yeah. Then you're missing out. Yeah. But everything seems promising for that movie. Oh, I it's, hope so. It's yeah. hard to imagine that movie being bad. Yeah. But we don't know because... We haven't seen uh, it yet. We, we talked to Ant-Man. Me and you, Ernie and Ro. We talked about those movies and everything moving forward. And those they were bad. very disappointing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
Ant-Man, Ant-Man in particular. We were like, I, I didn't think that could be that bad. I don't know if I recall a single good movie after. Was it? Uh, what was the last in the Thanos? Endgame. Endgame. I don't think there was a good one after Endgame. No, no way, way home. home. Guardians of the Galaxy three. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Guardians was good. I think Black Panther. I know you disagree. Oh, Wakanda Forever. Yeah. Yeah. No, that was. <laughs> So I, I would say Doctor Strange is kind of in the middle. Yeah, I was, was so disappointed by that movie. You were? I, I had such high hopes. Sam Raimi is like one of my favorite directors. Evil Dead, my yeah. favorite horror movies ever made. Doctor really, Strange, <clears throat> like one of my favorite superheroes, seemed like a match made in heaven, and that movie was just a complete disappointment. To yeah, me. I feel like it depends where your expectation is. That movie had like four plus five minus expectations, mm. and it was a three plus. Uh, so like three plus. As I watch it now, going back, I'm like, it's not bad. But it's definitely not in that, like, it's not great. No. So, um, video games for you, Tom. Yeah. Brandon asked this question. What video game series do you think is could potentially become the MCU version or DCU version of video games? Or the next, like, Star Wars or Game of Thrones? Game of Thrones isn't, like, uh, like Fallout is now. You could argue Fallout is, like, Game of Thrones in that regard. Like the next series that everybody is into and is just a talking point week to week. I think they could make, if they did it right, they could make um, The Elder Scrolls a very good series. That, and that could be very Game of Thrones esque. Um, yeah. With that medieval magic, high magic mm-hmm. setting. You guys are all in on um, And you have like so much area to go through. You know, there's how many different, um, you know, countries and states mm-hmm. that are there, you know. Um, you know, Cyrodiil and Morrowind and Skyrim and... And time. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah, follow- just a huge amount of time. Like, like follow is like that, too. You have 200 plus years to work with, whereas Elder Scrolls has, what, centuries? Oh, yeah. If not millennials? Yeah, I think they have... Millennium. <laughs> yeah. There's like multiple eras of time like mm. i think they break it down into like eras where it's you know 500 to 1000 years and you know pre tiber septum and the empire and yeah there's lots that you could do with it well i think todd howard is probably going to be a lot more willing to make a elder scrolls series now after so. the success of fallout especially if you get the right person mm-hmm. like jonathan nolan was the perf- the perfect person for fallout because he was a fan who knew how to make Fallout Fallout mm-hmm. for the TV screen. Uh, I said Mass Effect. I was thinking that, but like when you started saying like next MCU level one, I was like, I don't think Mass Effect he had enough no. behind it to do that. Jake added that part. That wasn't an okay. original question. I was going to say Mass Effect, Effect would make a really cool sci-fi series too. Yeah. I will say Nintendo is the next MCU for my... I think Nintendo becomes that level. It could be. Yeah, the, I think the of Mario it, movies. And I know you said it's more made for kids, but I'm like, that's why I think it's yeah. going to be the next MCU. Because kids love Nintendo. Mm-hmm. So, and then... Uh, you don't even remember you what said, I said. Huh? I don't even remember what I said. Dark Souls. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I blinked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I said, remember. Because yeah. my, my original thought was just what video game you'd want to see as an allegation. Oh, gotcha. What yeah. you want to see. And yeah. I think and the, then, the world and lore and, and stuff in all of the FromSoft games is awesome. Yeah, anything that has a pretty deep um, lore behind it, mm. you know, um, would make a pretty good movie. Agreed. I do. Fallout, though, was a prime yeah. to be this great series so much lore it's fun it's not serious mm-hmm. like last of us has like that serious serious like post-apocalypse like it's very story driven Fallout's just fun lore almost, fun locations almost a bit parody in some senses of like yeah kind of of like an apocalyptic world and stuff like that i haven't played a lot of Fallout. it's i wouldn't it's I wouldn't say it's a parody. Right, but I think like it a can parody, but it's a lighter-hearted version. Yeah, of, yeah. Of what an apocalypse is, mm. it's still serious, but it's like right, it's an apocalypse. It's more fun about yeah. it. So, all right, Tom. Thank you, bro. All right. Yes. We are officially out. No more surprises. <laughs> bye bye now.